to Boston Comedy Chicks. And because I'm a total nerd, that means I've been learning the Latin names of plants, some of which sound dirty, like clematis. It's a vine with beautiful flowers, but to me it sounds like a naughty disease. I'm afraid to ask for it at the garden center because they might give it to me. <laughs> Clematis. My friend Julie, she thinks it's what her boyfriend can't find. <laughs> a lot of people who've never seen a little person think we're mysterious creatures that could attack them. <laughs> There's one thing that I'm terrified of, and it's online dating. I'm afraid of meeting someone who has a weird fetish and wants me to do weird things, and I do not want to meet them in a park. I do... <laughs> I can go to a bar and I won't get carded because the bartender is afraid of offending me, but essentially, they're willing to let someone who looks like a child into their bar. <laughs> Technically, I am not Jewish because my mother is not Jewish and because my father is Catholic. <laughs> I read an article the other day that said if the Venus de Milo was alive today, she'd be a size 12 and weigh 160 pounds. I was like, oh my gosh, I would weigh 160 pounds if I also didn't have arms. <laughs> so excited. <laughs> My dad's disappointed in me because I'm a vegetarian and he wanted a son. <laughs> I told this to my mom and she says, you better adopt a Jewish baby. Like, but mom, Jewish babies come out of Jewish mothers. The umbilical cords still attach until they're like 30. This is turning me on so much. This is very similar to when I can't get the salt out of the shaker because it's too humid. Is it going to come out soon? Should I put some rice in it? And they're violent, and uh, they pull my hair constantly. And they bite. they bite real hard, uh, which isn't so bad until they get opposing teeth. And then it's like, oh, that hurts. And if I passed out, um, I would wake up with all my hair torn out and bite marks all over my body. And they go everywhere together. They're like a couple little Komodo dragons, like, crawling towards you. The bottle's still hanging out of their mouth. I worked as a travel agent, and all day long, all you'd hear is, what do you got that's cheaper? Don't you have a cheaper trip than that? What about a chata? You got a chata? To say Martin or Punta Cunta? One day I snapped. I gave this guy a hit of acid, and I said, that's the cheapest trip I have, pal, okay? So I got laid off. And I need to work, because I'd make a terrible housewife. What advice, if you ever get pulled over on Route 90 West, driving to the Cape, don't tell the cop you're going around the world theory, because you get a DUI. I've had four. I'm Irish. Uh, like, Stone Cold Sober every time. I think it's like a crazy form of aspirin. Like, I, I just don't know how to talk to cops. Like, uh, I'll rub my eyes to make it look like I'm crying. And, uh, and then I'm like, ah, uh, they're bloodshot. Like, he's going to think I'm high. Oh, my God, he's going to think I'm high. And then I try to unrub him, but that doesn't work. They just make you more high. And I just get worked up. And I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, he's going to think I'm high. And then he comes to the window, and I'm like, I'm not high. You're going to think I'm high, but I'm not. Because my eyes are bloodshot, but I, I'm not actually high. It's just that I rubbed him because I wanted to make you, you think I was crying. But the fact is, is that I'm just lost trying to get to the Cape. And, uh... I didn't realize that you had to take a ferry to get all the way to Asia, and I just wasn't thinking clearly. And it's it like uh, nobody specifies they're not high unless they're high. I'm like, uh, yeah, they do, because I'm not high. And uh, that's how you get a DUI when you're 17. The third was a good idea for like five minutes. And now I'm really not so sure. It's a little embarrassing, because I always thought that by the time I had my third kid, I'd be at least on my second husband. And, um, and, and I'm still in my first, so I, you know, I'm, I, I'm an underachiever in my own head, and I really need to get over that and enjoy this little bundle of, like, blood-curdling scream joy that, like, turns every visit into just a whirling dervish of shit, but amazing at parallel parking. And you know what? People don't expect a woman to be good at parallel parking, apparently. 
So I have, I have parallel parked in Boston a Suburban and other large cars. But the other day, I was parallel parking in my usual one-step way because I'm that good. That's right. I twist. I line up. I whip in to very small spots. I've had people applaud for me. I am not kidding you. After I parallel park. Well, this day, I hear this voice, and I'm ignoring it, this chatter, and it's this guy, this panhandler on the side of the road who's decided to help me. I don't realize he's talking to me, but I hear, you got it, baby. Come on, baby. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Come on. Come on. Come on. I guess I have too much Michigan in me still. I'm clinging to it. Even though I've been here a long time when I came here, let me tell you, it was a culture shock. First of all, when I tried to find my apartment and I asked for directions, they kept telling me to go to the next set of lights. But I thought they were saying satellite. And I drove and drove and drove and drove <laughs> looking for a satellite dish to turn at. That I am not kidding. And I was reduced to the point of tears. And then they kept telling, talking about these things called squares. You know, go down to the square. When you get to the square, and I'm like, looking for a giant square. I imagined a sculpture of a square or something. like. But no, they don't tell you what a square is. We don't have squares in Michigan. 